Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we'll learn how to use vertex groups in Blender. Let's get started. Vertex groups are collections of vertices that you can group together in a mesh. They help you apply effects to specific areas of the mesh. Let's start by adding vertex group. Press Shift A and add a plane. Press tab to switch to edit mode. You'll see there are only 4 vertices. Let's subdivide the plane to add more vertices. Right click, choose subdivide, then open the bottom left panel and su set subdivisions to 20. Now, go to the object data properties tab. In the vertex group panel, click the plus button to add a new group. You can rename it if you like. Select the vertices you want in this group. Then click assign button. To test it, click deselect to clear all selections, then click select to highlight the group again. To add more vertices, hold shift and select the new vertices, then click assign. You can also delete vertices from the group by selecting them and pressing remove. Now let's assign these vertices to the group. Switch to weight paint mode. You'll see that the vertex group is shown in red. The blue area shows vertices that aren't in the group. Between the red and blue, there is a transition area with colors that change from yellow to blue. This transition represents vertex, vertex weights ranging from 0 to 1. A weight of 0 is shown in blue, while a weight of 1 is shown in red. Switch back to edit mode. With the vertex group selected, Set the vertex weight to 0.5 and click assign. Now, let's return to weight paint mode to see the change. The vertex group now appears in green, showing the 0.5 weight value. If we set the weight to 0.7 and assign it, the group will display in yellow representing the higher weight. You can also use weight paint to add vertices to a group. Click the plus button to create a new vertex group. Press F key to adjust the brush size. Adjust the weight value as needed and apply it to the specific areas of the plane. Switch back to edit mode to see the group. You can select any vertex group from the panel. Alright, now let's learn how to use vertex groups. In Blender, vertex groups are a useful tool with many applications. Here are the main use cases. Vertex groups are a handy way to control how modifiers affect a model. Switch to object mode, then go to the modifiers tab and add a displace modifier. Click the new button to create a new texture. Go to the texture properties tab and change the texture type to clouds. You'll see the geometry change based on the texture. Go back to the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier. Set the subdivision level to 3 for a smoother look. Adjust the displacement strength value to see how it affects all the vertices. Alright, what if you want to apply a displace modifier to the specific part of the mesh? In this case, the vertex groups comes into play. Let's add a vertex group. Press tab key to switch to edit mode. You can enable the edit mode and on change options to displace the modifier in the edit mode. But it will be better to display the displace modifier in edit mode. 
This way we can select the vertex group more easily. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect the vertices. Go to the Object Data Properties tab and click the plus button to add a vertex group. Rename the group as Displacement. Switch to Top View. Select the vertices you want to add to the group. Set the weight value to 1 and click Assign. Switch to Object Mode and go to the Modifiers tab. Select the Displacement Vertex group we just created. That's it! Now, the Displace modifier will only affect the selected Vertex group. You can also invert the Vertex group in France by clicking the arrow toggle. Alright, let's try another modifier. Delete the existing modifiers. Add a mask modifier. Select any vertex group we just created. As you can see, the modifier will mask all the vertices except the ones in the selected group. You can also invert the selection if needed. Alright, another use for vertex group is in the physics simulations. In physics simulations, like cloth and soft body, you can use vertex groups to control which parts of the mesh are affected. Let's try this with a cloth simulation. First, delete the mask modifier. Go to the physics properties tab and add a cloth simulation to the plane. When you play the simulation, you'll see the plane fall straight down. Now, if you want to pin the top vertices of the plane, switch to Edit Mode, add a new vertex group, and name it Pins. Select the top two vertices and assign them to the disk group. Then, go to the Cloth Simulation settings and under Shape, Select the Pins Vertex Group. Switch back to Object Mode. Now, when you play the simulation, you'll see the cloth is pinned at those vertices. Vertex groups are also useful in particle systems. Let's delete the cloth simulation and go to the Particle Properties tab. Click the plus button to add a new particle system. When you play the simulation, you'll see particle emitting from the whole mesh surface. To make the particles fall straight down, open the velocity panel and set the normal value to zero. Now, if you want the particles to emit from only part of the plane, switch to Edit Mode, add a new vertex group, and name it Particles. Select the vertices you want and assign them to this group. Switch back to Object Mode Go to the Particle System settings and scroll down to the Vertex groups. Choose the particle group we just made. When you play the simulation, you'll see particles emitting only from the selected vertices. Vertex groups are also useful for creating hair or grass. Scroll up in the Particle settings Switch the particle type to hair and increase the hair length. That's it. If you delete the density vertex group, hair particles will emit across the whole mesh. You can also control hair length with another vertex group. To set this up, click the monitor icon to hide the particle system in the viewport. Go to the Object Data Properties tab Add a new vertex group and name it Length. 
Switch to weight paint mode, select the gradient brush and set the weight to 1. Switch the top view and apply the brush from left to right. Switch back to object mode, re-enable hair particles in the viewport and scroll to the vertex group panel in the particle settings. Select the length group we created. That's it. Now the hair length gradually changes from long to short. You can also use vertex groups in geometry node. First, delete the particle system and switch the timeline editor to geometry node editor. Click the new to add a geometry node. Then add the instills on points node between the input and output node. Add a cube object node. Connect it to the instance node and set the x, y and z dimensions of the cube to 0.1 meters. Set the instance scale values for x, y and z to 0.4. Next, switch to edit mode, go to the object data tab and add a new vertex group name, geometry node. Select the vertices you want and assign them to the group. Switch back to object mode. In the geometry node editor, plug the selection output into the group input node, then rename the input to vertex group. Go to the modifiers tab and click the input attribute toggle to select the vertex group we just created. That's it. Vertex group are essential for character rigging. When creating a skeleton for a model, you assign ways to vertex group to control which parts the bones influence. This helps create smooth and realistic joint movements. We have a character model and armature in the scene. First, let's bind the armature to the model. Select the model then hold shift and select the armature. Press Ctrl P and choose set parent to empty groups. Now select the model and go to the object data properties tab. In the vertex group panel you'll see a group created for each bone. Select the armature and switch to pose mode. Choose the head bone and try rotating it. You'll notice it doesn't deform the model. This is because we haven't assigned any weight to the vertex group yet. Go to the edit menu and disable the lock object modes option to allow selecting the model in pose mode. Then go to the weight paint mode ensuring the head vertex group is selected. Paint the head with a weight value of 1. Now, when you rotate the head bone, the head follows the armature. To make smoother transition between joints and avoid deformation issues, you can paint the waist manually. However, this is the longest way to add vertex group. To automate this, go to the vertex group panel, click the arrow icon and delete all groups. Switch back to object mode, select the model, then the armature and press Ctrl P to assign automatic ways. Now, in pose mode, you can deform the model as needed.
In weight paint mode, you can also select any bond and adjust weights by pressing shift Control left click on the bone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.